What's going on, everybody? It's Avatar Shea, and I am in the lab working hard on this rebrand, getting everything really in place for you guys, for us, us both, for me to enjoy and for you to enjoy the new content and stuff that I got coming. Speaking of which, I'm going to have a new segment called Decoded, where we're going to go over movies and break them down for occult themes, spirituality themes, consciousness, esoterics, whatever you want to call it, religious themes even. And how it can help you or how it's taken away from your greatness here on this here earth. That section is going to be called Decoded. And one of the greatest people who broke down movies and dealt with a lot of symbolism, etc. This is a guy called Brother Penny. This dude, he made the transition back in November, but he was a big teacher and lecturer in the conscious community, as they call it. Teaches a lot on occultism and spirituality. And he taught me a lot along my journey that propelled me to go further and do the things that I'm doing today. So we're going to get into a video, a 30 minute section of a lecture that he did some years ago so the audio is uh outdated <laughs> and i think it was over a voice call back when they used to do the radio broadcast joints i think it was one of them but it's one of my favorite ones and it teaches you the importance of decoding so hopefully this will be some clarity it's entertaining in this hell and i just love dude and i think this is a great way to introduce the segment that we're going to be getting into pretty soon stay tuned for more content peace oh yeah and um so so the stories in these movies all the time, we get so caught up in the surface, oh, that's just the white man, that we miss that they're only using our mythology yeah. to, 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 to try to make our story their story, which actually is the only thing that's really happening and the only thing they could do. You know what I'm saying? There is no other story but our story. You get what I'm saying? There is no other story but our story. You get what I'm saying? So if there is no other story but our story, on a human level, they're trying to impress us and act like we don't have no story, so they have to hide things. You get what I'm saying? Right. Because the more they say, well, the woman is God, then then the obvious thing is, well, the black woman is the first woman, so she must be God. They can't <laughs> say that. You get what I'm right. saying? They can't right. say that. They can't say, say, uh, Bruce Willis been playing Horace before I was fucking born. You get what right. I'm saying? Because then that gets, you, that gets you to say, well, Horace must be important if, if, if I'll do you even one better. The word hero comes from Horace. So if every story needs a hero, you might decide to say, okay, if every story needs a hero, what's the template here? You know what I'm saying? Horace. Horace is a black man. Oh, my goodness. Brad Pitt. All of these <laughs> motherfuckers is trying to be you. Oh, I get it now. Fuck around. Y'all go, you know, Gary Sinise. Well, y'all go around and be like, God damn, that's what they were trying to do. Schwarzenegger, that's what they was trying to do. You get what I'm saying? So what they have to do is tell you a surface story and give you the mythology. You must become a decoder in some sort of way. Keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. Because when you decode, any ritual that they're trying to do, you put, it's out in the open, and that's a wrap. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. There wasn't too much in it besides the mere fact that monkeys rose up and got in your ass. Now, <laughs> I'm a monkey fan. Guess what? All the original Planet of the Apes, I got all the motherfucking shits. And I went through all the motherfucking shits. Now, the book itself comes from a sci-fi writer. And I remember looking at it, he was talking about this planet, the original, with Charlton Heston. You know, mm. damn dirty apes and all that kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? I was into that shit. When I was young, Planet of the Apes was such a fucking phenomenon. Oh, yeah. It was on constantly, constantly. They would just run these things on. This is before cable. So you would see it every Saturday. And then a little bit later, they used to have something called the 430 movie on ABC. You, mm -hmm. you know, in that basically yeah. when you come home from work, you would see all the James Bonds, all the Godzillas. This yeah. is, and I know somebody going, and without even looking at the chat room, yeah, they used to do the karate movies. There was another channel, uh, Fox 5 did the karate movies. This was, uh, this was called the, there was a movie of the week, the late night movie, and the afternoon movie. And, and um, Planet of the Apes was a big celebrity on that shit. In like Flint, our man Flint. All them crazy Godzilla versus uh, 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 Mecha Godzilla, all that shit was on there, Morph Mariah. So it was on constantly. We used to see them over and over and over again. And it was such right. a big phenomenon. On the pack of the original Planet of the Apes, they have, you know, the whole history of that. I went through that before I seen the new movie. And, you know, they went in hard on the impact, the makeup, what they were doing, the phenomenon, the money it made. You know what I'm saying? When I tell you the original Planet of the Apes was, hands down, the first yeah. Matrix. The sure. first Matrix. What it mm -hmm. was, and, they, and Tim, uh, what's, what's the boy who did Batman? Um, when they did, they did a new Planet of the Apes with, with Marky Mark from the Funky Bunch, which people didn't like. But see, because Tim, uh, Tim, Tim Burton, Burton. Tim Burton yeah. what he does is 
he's always been a makeup man. Tim Burton, if he knew some occult science, this is something Bobby would say too. He knew some occult science, he'd be a deadly motherfucker because he's the one who did uh, Sleepy Hollow. His biggest thing was the original Batman, which was like dynamic but no science. His most scientific thing was uh, Beetlejuice. Most scientific. He should have asked the world <laughs> and all of that. And his, his, his visualization is off the hook, but scientifically he'll leave you barren and hollow. You know what I'm saying? So he did the movie, and, of course, the apes were phenomenal, but the science was very thin. Like, the hottest thing he did in there said the apes were saying they all came from Kalima. I'm like, mm-hmm. I was, uh, me and Temple, I said, no, they're saying Kalima, Kali. And I, he said, oh, shit, yeah, I didn't even know. I said, the way they was uh, enunciating the shit, you wouldn't. And, 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 and I even forgot that movie. There was a little bit more science. I mean, but this is what they do show, and they showed in that Tim Burton movie, there was a black dude with him, and they connected it to slavery, you know, him being a freedom runner. So you kind of felt, see, but they do that for a trick because that's the easiest thing to set the mood. Like, if America's <laughs> supposed to get in the mood, they just show you a black man in cuffs uh, or a black man getting whipped, and then you're in an automatic move. That's just a movie, movie trick. Morgan Freeman got his ass whipped by Gene Hackman in that cowboy movie with, uh, uh, with uh, what's your boy, um, with uh, Clint Eastwood. Uh, I can't remember the name of that bullshit. But there was a scene where Morgan Freeman got whipped. Immediately you go into this emotion, and they were going for that. Even a better example of that, and it, in my opinion, was the single moment that made Denzel Washington's career in that Civil War movie. Um, uh, with him, Morgan Freeman, and... Um. and uh, you, uh, I love the fifty four. Uh, whatever that glory, is, everybody knows glory, what it is. Glory, glory, glory. Yeah, when glory. They, when they, I, and I will tell you two things how I know they ain't bullshit. The first thing, and before I tell you how that shit, well, it's obvious that made his career. But when uh, Matthew Broderick told Carrie Always, Elways, you didn't think I knew their names, um, <laughs> to whip, to whip um, Denzel. It, it was to whip somebody. Carrie Always said, "No, not like this." Because he understood, and they made you understand that it was a part of our Holocaust. So we, he was basically saying, we'll do anything else, but we can't use this whip. Meaning they're aware of it. So meaning when they whip Denzel, either later in that movie or whenever, in that movie, yeah, later in that movie, they're aware of where they're trying to go with this. You know what I'm saying? So everything is done for a reason. Every cup, every ashtray, every toy, yeah. every can every. is put there for a reason. There is yeah. nothing haphazardly. You get what I'm saying? So you got to remember, when you see these things, you get to go, oh, okay, they're doing that. Why are they doing that? You get what I'm saying? You should, that's the first thing you're decoding. Why are they putting that book there? Why is the character reading that book? Freeze it and see what book he's reading. They're telling you something and everything. That shit made Denzel's career, because I was on a date with my girlfriend back at the time when that shit came out. That motherfucker just whipped off his shirt, started crying when he was getting beat without making no sound. Oh, Denzel! <laughs> That's it. I said, this nigga right here, me and my friend, he just looked like a regular nigga. I don't know what the fuck they talking no. about. No. Damn, damn, we was in New York, me and the same girlfriend at the time. This is in eight, This is in 91, 92, whenever this shit was happening. We were in a place right. called the Shark Bar. The Shark Bar was the hot soul food jump off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You was doing it up when you was at the Shark Bar. This had to be 92 because I just had that job with Marley Mall. So the money was looking great, gravy, and all that shit. So I'm in there with my girlfriend. The nigga from Lisa Lisa and the Cold Jam walk in. The one with the big fucking nose. She's like, oh, are you from the Cold Jam? He's like, oh, yeah. I was there and said, don't do that shit no more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You need to do that shit with somebody bigger. You know what I'm saying? We can't, you know, you don't get excited for the Cold Jam. You know what I'm saying? It's not even Lisa Lisa. You know what I mean? Then Zell right. walked the fuck up because that was his oh. hangout. Got the cab and he had that, he had that, you know, Spike Lee look, the rolled up fucking pea coat jacket. You know what I'm saying? That, that. I was a struggling actor, but my shit ain't struggling right now. You niggas need to understand I'm Denzel, but I'm not really Denzel. You know, how's it going in there? She went, she lost fucking, I said, look, for the rest of the night, you need to buy your own motherfucking drinks. You feel what I'm saying? You done fucked up for the night. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Denzel, Denzel, here comes Denzel. Fuck Denzel. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it was crying. It got his ass beat. You know what I'm saying? Fuck him. Oh, Denzel. Oh, for the rest of the night, you need to keep buying, you need to buy them fucking martinis. Them martinis is on your ass. Don't be like that. You're like, nigga, I'm like that. So everything in every movie has a place. Everything in every movie, yes. there's a reason for doing it. They don't do it for nothing. Now, Planet of the Apes was released, the new Planet of the Apes, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. When they're saying Rise of the Planet of the Apes, well, let me tell you this about movies. Movies in themselves are nothing but light. Can I get an agreement on that? Yes, yes. Spirits are nothing but light. Spirits are nothing but light. Movies are nothing but light. Light formed to create a reaction. 
If a scary movie, it's supposed to be scared. Funny movie, it's supposed to be funny. <laughs> Sometimes you'll walk out the theater crying. Watch a Bruce Lee flick, somebody's going to get kicked in the ass once you come out the theater. You get what I'm saying? So right. you cannot know. So with, just with that alone, you cannot say movies ain't nothing but movies. They right. have an impact. An emotional impact. I already talked about yeah. how ritual is done to create what? An emotion. Each movie is a ritual done to create emotion, to create an emotion. Yeah. The end. And it's done spiritually. Why? Because they're using light, and spiritual is light. They are also hypnotizing your monkey ass. If you went to the doctor, he wanted to hypnotize you, what he would do is turn off the lights, make you look yeah. at one light source, and you would hear sound that's all around you. Yep. Close your eyes. Yeah. Open your eyes. Scratch like a monkey, you fucking L Bay. They would do all of that shit. When you go into the movies, they also have something called suspension of disbelief. Yeah. Meaning you suspend your disbelief. What yeah. you disbelieve, you automatically say, I know Neo cannot fly and walk through a wall, but I'm going to sp suspend my disbelief of that. Meaning, another way of saying that is I'm going to the movie to be hypnotized. I'm going to throw everything I think is rational out the window, and I want to be taken away to whatever world they want to take me away to. Fuck it. I'm in Pandora with Avatar, and I love to be here. I'm going to make the connection with the monkey and, and the horse and that flying thing, and I'm going to fly. I'm going to make the Ori or whatever the fuck they was doing. You want to do that. That's what movies do. It gives you a break from the bullshit. So with yeah. that being said, you walk in there to be hypnotized, to be mind controlled, and I'll go one better. And I believe it was Brother Phil. I'm 85% I'm sure. Brother Phil pointed this out. When you go to the movie theaters, the M&Ms and the, uh, 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 the, the, the Juicy Fruits and all the rest of that shit, you, the sizes that they have, you, don't, you can't buy those in a regular store. You can get some large yeah. M&Ms, but the size in the movie theater, you can't get. Basically, mo movie food is specialized. The same treats you can get on the street, specialized. He said because the shit they put in there shuts down the pineal gland. Mm. Shut down the pineal gland and in a way where you are more receptive. That's what fluoride does. So they can just put more, and, and they said that popcorn butter and shit shuts <laughs> down the pineal gland. He said, what happens, I believe it was him who said it. If not, I've heard this through some lecturer. He said, you eat the shit. Well, 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 what I do know about fluoride, and, and everyone needs to know this, if you're using fluoride toothpaste, oh, do not yeah. use it. Get a non-fluoride toothpaste because fluoride itself, is it shuts down the pineal. It makes it more receptive to anything in your surroundings. Yeah. So now, they said that's the shit that's in the goddamn food at the movie theater. So don't eat that shit if you can. Mm -hmm. Now, um, now if you're receptive, you're in a room with lights and sounds around, you're there to be hypnotized. But they're not trying to talk to the obvious. See, we get trapped up in this shit. You know, when people see an avatar, oh, oh, my God, this white man is doing this again. And then when they, heard, when they heard my decoding of it, they was like, oh, shit, the white man is a little bit more devious than my fucking surface emotions. Yeah. They're not interested in your surface emotions. You know what I'm saying? The white man cometh and he take you for your woman. That's supposed to get, distract you from the frail message of what was decoded in that, which you can get lot, which you could get in the archives on the remix, my detailed yeah. breakdown of Avatar, where you can see I'm breaking down. No, I'm gonna show you how they correspond in this shit, how it's motherfucking happening, how it's happening to Wyclef John, how it's happening to Bill Clinton. That's what they doing. Why you worrying about what titty, what white man is sucking, or what black queen? You know what I'm saying? You worry about that shit. You worry about that shit, but that's what they want you to worry about. Mm -hmm. what they, and, and, and even on it, that's still mind control because you got a whole bunch of church niggas in there clapping their hands for Jake Scully, which is still bad. I told the story where I went to see um, Tom Cruise, War of the Worlds, and oh. you know this, the, the, the monsters had Egyptian heads and they was coming from the earth, taking they, they was ready to run their shit, getting it on. <laughs> and as soon as Tom Cruise scored with that virus, you have one lonely nigga in the theater. Yippee! Yay, Tom, do it for this one for the team. On the surface, that's what that means. On the underground, you knew that was our rise. That was right. our rise. You get what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. they're constantly turning the energy around. But the decoder who understands this mythology, understands this mind control, can go deeper on that, can go deeper on that. Now, right. since they are using light and all the rest of that jazz, we've got to know, as I pointed out, this thing could go two ways. It could go two ways. It could go in our favor if we take the energy. Remember, why do you think, you think I'm just ranting, but why was I telling you about 9-11 and the getting the Pope's energy? Yeah. Because... Once they put it out there, energy is neutral. We can take right. it back. That's what we did with Avatar in that ritual. That's why you don't hear nothing about Clinton over there no more. 
and you even heard them start to say, we're going to make Wyclef, we're going to make him the president or whatever the fuck. They started saying right. that shit. Even though it didn't happen, ritualistically, they said, we don't want it. Y'all niggas fucked us up on some Panic Avatar live in the remix shit. And they, it's not like they sitting around listening to it. They ain't got to. All they got to know is they wanted it to flops constantly. This ain't working. That ain't working. That ain't working. Okay, we overstepped our bounds. We ain't doing good enough. Let's get out. We symbolically need to get out. Wyclef John, you should be the president. And Wyclef represented that dude in Avatar that said, I will fly with you. And got his yeah. ass whipped. So now they had to they had to give it to that nigga. Even though nothing happened, that's good enough for them. To, that's how they bowed out of some shit they could not handle. Remember, they've been trying to get in Haiti forever forever and this is how they tried to do it we made it a flop we took their energy actually we took our energy that they tried to use took it back you get what i'm saying so when anything happens based upon our agenda if they're using movies i i talked about oscar michaud before oh yeah. and i'm not even gonna try to spell it oscar <laughs> michaud was the spike lee of his fucking day a bad motherfucker you look at him on um this type try, try to spell the last name the best you can oscar michaud movies and 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 I'll get the correct spelling. Those who are having so much trouble, email me when you try to get your panic pack at panicpack at hotmail dot com, and I'll give the correct spelling so you can see who this man was. Years ago, he came to me in a dream, in a detailed dream. Basically, he said all the chemtrails and all the rest of that kind of shit is not working. The greatest thing that the powers that be have over you is movies. Because and this and mind you, you're so powerful. There's five movies that come out every week to try to slow your ass down. He said, all that shit they talking about where they're going to cut off the lights, the powers, and all of these put you in this darkness. He said, think about this. How are you going to put niggas with pineal glands in darkness? In darkness, that don't even right. Make, right. That don't even make no fucking sense. You know what I'm saying? He said, they always have to keep lights on. Those lights are movies. So in other words, all that other shit that you're complaining about, they're going to do all these death camps and all that. He said, that shit is a flop. That's just to scare you. He said, and when you're scared, you go to escape. Where? The fucking movies. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they're leading your ass to these movies, this constant flicker show of mind control. He said, we stop. He said, two ways out of it. You either stop watching them or you understand the decode. They don't work on me. I know what they're trying to say. And when, when, I, when I brought that darkness, that underlying story into the light, it, 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 it has no effect. That's what I urge everyone to do, bring that darkness into the light. So when they put something out like Rise of the Planets of the Apes, they done fucked up. They done fucked up. Especially if you know who's the planet of the motherfucking apes, nigga. This, if you know this is the planet, if you know that this is the planet of the apes, they already they made my job easy. You know what I'm saying? We make now I just go to the mythology correspondent, put it together, and my word is bond to this shit. Right, they done right. fucked up now, player. You done fucked up now. And they even fucked up worse if they use it now ancient mythology. They're going to kick, they're yeah. kicking their own ass. Don't they even say that shit in the Bible somewhere? The end days, the weapons they use against them will be turned around against yeah. them and all this kind of dumb shit. Yeah, that's what's happening now. Their own weapon is an ass whipping. All to, all, and only to whip them with their ass, all you have to know, all you have to know, all you have to know is how to do it. And you're learning that right now. It's simple. Think this way. As a man thinketh, so shall it be. Think this way, and word is born. We got it. Don't think you need to be some fucking phenomenal expert. All you have to do is know your business. You know what I'm saying? A baby ain't an expert, but it know how to shit. You know what I'm saying? Be natural. Just be natural. Yeah, I know what you're trying to do. Even if you don't know what the fuck they're trying to do, just pretend like you know what the fuck they're trying to do. You'll probably make a little bit more practice, or a little bit more progress, I should say. Just pretending. Know that there's always something there. Every movie you go to, know the Penguin movies. There's, there's code in there. Yeah. Well, fucking penguins, penguins, penguins were singing, doing their shit. That was us, the universe. Then mm -hmm. one nigga come up and say, I think we need to dance to make ourselves popular. And that's not <laughs> but your tap dancing ass later. You know what I'm saying? All right. that shit means something. Every movie means something. Let the movie prove to you that it don't mean nothing. The only shit that don't mean nothing is them Tyler fucking Perry movies. Oh, that okay. shit don't even mean nothing. It means sometimes a good laugh, but it means they got another nigga to wear a dress. And that's their <laughs> ritual. You get what I'm saying? Fuck you, right. Spike Lee only got fucking 25 movies out in 25 fucking years, damn near. And this nigga on number 75. They even make his plays in the movies. They ain't doing that because of his talent. They doing that because it's a ritual. And, and here these niggas sucking it up. Shit, even Spike Lee said shit. Nigga, we got a black president, and y'all niggas still interested in that? <laughs> I'm like, damn, right. man. He's right. right. For them human niggas, y'all should be offended. That's right. That's you know what I'm even, saying? So, now, so understand. Okay, go ahead, Blue. No, I was just going to say, even Dr. Frances Cress Welsing, when she was on the remix, said, you know, it's what is cute about a man dressing up playing your grandmother? How is that funny? Right, right, right. Let's say my grandmother's fucking funny enough. You know what right. I'm saying? Just dress, up, just dress up playing grandma. You know what I'm saying? That's enough. You know what I'm saying? That's enough. And even yeah. in, even here, here Telltale, he stole that shit. 
All right, let's get down to this rise. You niggas listen long enough. Yes. Now, there's not really much. There's not really much to it that ain't been said. But I'll tell you some things that triggered off. First, it was released in August 5th. The next day, the London riots happened. I'm like, shit, and nobody emailed me and caught that shit. You know what I'm saying? What you're talking about is this light show now, based upon the energy that's here, the energy that's happening with our consciousness, this light show manifests on Earth. Remember me saying a thousand times that everything you do for ritual is a physical act that's supposed to impact the astral world, manifests on Earth, right? Well, you had a, you had a movie, you had a light movie, movie with lights, which is spiritual now, that had an impact where on Earth, which is an indication of this movie synchronized with something that's happening in the actual world, it was able to funnel itself down into the physical. For instance, Ogun, let's just say, is light. Ogun being light, when you set up a altar, a picture, a statue, a, a, a picnic, or whatever the fuck you're going to do for Ogun, you create a gateway for Ogun to come down. So why do you have pictures? Why do you have an altar? Why do you have statues? Because that light energy... That light energy, which resides in the astral or perhaps beyond whatever you're doing, needs a funnel to make itself down into this place. That's why we talked about, the, in fact, the cinnamon reef. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Or yeah. probably brought up reefs in the first place because anything circular represents fem feminine energy. And the feminine yeah. energy is how you give birth, how you give birth to an to, uh, 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 entity here. And if you don't know that, you, your vagina is how your kids got here. So, so, so those things, that avatars, statues, mirrors, all yeah. of these particular things are called upon with your mind and funneled through a certain, through, 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 through a symbol or a circle. Now, so movies at this point, when they do them, what they're trying to do is create a funnel for something spiritual to happen. You get what I'm saying? Why do you think in every movie in the 70s, even in the 80s, black people would get killed? Yeah. But and then and then niggas was dying because what they did was create a funnel through movies. You the one black guy, you get shot. Oh ah, you know what I'm saying? And then all these niggas is getting shot. You get what I'm saying? Also note that they figured out frequencies and colors that talk to your chakras without your mind knowing. So while you thought that you were just wild and had no control, but everybody's getting shot when they watch Menace to Society and, right. and Boys in the Hood, is because they were sending signals through 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 sound and through light, for you to go out and kill a motherfucker. That's where they at with it. Where you at with it? I don't like the Illuminati. That's where you at with it. The Illuminati <laughs> is not good people. They don't play hotel. That's where you at with it. You know what I'm saying? Where they at with it, they want some mind control shit. Everyone can search and read the movie, The Exorcist. In that movie, what they did, they sliced uh, this, I think, and I wrote it when I studied in my book, 24, 24 22, maybe even 27 frames per second that you see um, in a movie. So when you're watching a movie, you're watching just a lot moving pictures, 27 per second, per second. And your subconscious mind sees every single frame. They show that in the movie uh, Fight Club, where Brad Pitt edited a dick inside one of the things. They showed it, and the kid was like, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? They slowed it and make it seem like you see, but you wouldn't see it with the physical eye. In the movie Exorcist, what they did was, was edit scenes of gore, dead cats, dead animals, and dead, you know, just uh, Holocaust uh, scenes. Dead people through the movie. Now, physically, you would never see it. Subconsciously, people will, if you remember this movie or the hype on this movie, one person even died in the theater. And, you know, people were coming out sick, passing out in this movie. I... Then, then they found out that uh, what other movies would do was uh, edit a frame of popcorn, uh, Cracker Jacks, sodas, all yeah. of this shit from the concession stand, and people were getting thirsty and all of this. Yeah. So, basically, you're on Scout's Honor. These movie companies are on Scout's Honor not to do that. So, and, and unless you're a motherfucking Boy Scout, you know Scout's Honor don't mean shit. Now, if you think, what was clear is they did it in that Passion of the Christ movie. Because mm -hmm. they were putting in cameras where people were looking at this movie, and they were putting in cameras on people's faces as they were looking at this movie. They're only doing that for, they're experimenting with some mind control shit. That's the end. The sounds could do it and all this, because they, they're talking to your chakras, which are emotional centers. So, right. in other words, they're getting it in. They're getting it in on your ass. The only thing that could save you when you go to this movie or any movie is if you know they're doing it. Once you, once you pull back the covers, you're safe. You're right. safe. Once right. you pull back the covers, you're safe. So I urge you to, to, to know or just to know that they're doing this kind of shit is enough. You know what I'm saying? It keeps you out of that hypnotic, hypnotic state. For instance, M. Night Shyamalan, when he did the movie... Uh, 
what's that movie, Sixth Sense. He said in the movie, this is a Hindu man who understands about chakras. If you think he doesn't understand about chakras, watch this movie, The Village. The monster was red when they wanted to go in the forest, which took a lot of uh, courage. They wore yellow. The girl was blind. She represented the pineal. The trees were wrapped around uh, with these kind of trees with a, with a straight stump, and they were wrapped around representing kundalini energy. Uh, 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 the edge of where they lived was green, representing the heart chakra. When they crossed it, the people, the elders, uh, they all wore blue around their neck when they started telling you what happened, which is communication of the throat chakra. They kept their secrets in a little black box, which represented the pineal. When she got the medicine, it represented the crown chakra. So he did a chakra story in this motherfucker. You get what I'm saying? Um, this nigga, when he did Lady in the Water, um, he had to go get this black rock called Key. Um, Key represented the pineal. Um, the monster, uh, th there was a boy in the movie who was half muscular on one side, half skinny on the other side. He represented yin-yang energy. The beast, he was the only one who was able to calm down the beast. So he jumped on the monster because the yin-yang force is at the base of your spine, the Ida and Pengala. So it's the only thing that can hold down the beast. She eventually had to be picked up by the hawk, meaning the crown chakra, higher self. Um, the, the, the colors in the guy's shirt, uh, he, was, he was the heart chakra in this movie. And the colors in his shirt were green when he was helping her. And then he was stuttering in the movie. Each time he lost his stutter, he had a blue shirt on, which mm. represented the throat chakra. You get what I'm saying? So he's ABC in terms of, of, of you know, I actually was going to clown his ass, but didn't even feel like writing a fucking story about M. Night Shyamalan, his ABC fucking my first metaphysical movie guy. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. You know what I mean? Uh, even in Unbreakable, I was drunk one night, decoded it, and forgot everything in the morning. Didn't feel like watching it again. But it was about the yin yang force. You know what I'm saying? It was about uh, polarity. That movie. He's breakable, so there must be another side. You know what I'm saying? And then I went through. There were some things that Bruce Willis would wear the green and this, that, the other. But his shit is so easy and corny, it don't matter. His first movie, Sixth Sense, in the commentary, he talks about throughout the whole movie. I never showed the color red because the color red which he did not say, whenever anything was spiritual, he would show red. I thought I didn't even notice that, because red is the root chakra. When you see red, especially flashed across on the blue big screen, what it does, it reminds you or grounds you in reality. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Grounds you in reality. So that's when you remember, oh, shit, I got to pee, my soda's gone, or oh, I'm sitting in some sticky shit, oh, I'm on a date. When you see these other colors, you're lost in the movie. You forget you're in the movie theater. Where else did they do that? Well, they did that in a movie called The Matrix. Everything was green. The heart chakra is calming. They paint walls and institutions green, jails green. They used to do that. in the projects, know what our walls were colored? Green. You know what I'm saying? Because the green is supposed to keep you calm. They said in the 50s, they urged all the men to paint the kitchen green so the women would stay in the kitchen. In the Matrix, which was supposed to be cushy, relaxing, comfortable, that's why everything was motherfucking green. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're not playing with they not playing with you. You playing with you. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> they doing this and flashing these motherfucking colors for a reason. You got to know this shit to protect yourself. They ain't doing this just because. Oh, I guess the matrix should be green. They going on the science. The niggas who do commercials know this shit. They know about your chakras. You get what I'm saying? They said the low, the lower three of your chakras are your animal chakras. Red. Yeah. Orange, yellow. Every goddamn fast food sign of a major chain got yeah. red, orange, yellow yeah. in it. Yeah. The color brown is a mix between red and orange, which is closer to the root chakra. So when they want you to stay in a restaurant, the tables are all brown. So one of them restaurants where you go in and they want you to chat and drink and have coffee, yeah. all brown. One of them where they want you to get in and get out, like McDonald's, red and orange. Eat and go, motherfucker. Eat That's and right. go. It's Don't fast play. food. They ain't playing with this shit. H&R Block. <laughs> Who wants yes. you to be comfortable with your taxes? What's their logo? Green, Green, nigga. Green. <laughs> Get your ass right in the matrix. Yes. You know what I'm saying? They ain't playing with this shit. You playing with this shit. You ain't supposed to know your chakras so you could be on Facebook talking about, I balance my chakras because I'm in the tub <laughs> with a rubber ducky. Fuck right. that. Know it because that's the attack. You need to know this because yes. if you want to yes. know how they attack, and this is how they attack, and with your power, with your yes. spirituality, they ain't attacking you with no hot made-up Illuminati shit. It's your shit. You're the fucking Illuminati. The yes. symbols of the Illuminati are yours. Yes. It's a fucking eye on the pyramid. The eye of Peru on the pyramid. Fuck you scared and talking about them for. How powerful <laughs> they, can they be if they're using your shit? Yes. If they're using your shit to fuck you up, they ain't saying they powerful. They're saying you niggas ain't. They say you niggas don't know your shit because we're using your shit against you. Take it back, nigga. Take it back. That's what we're talking about here. Take it back. Everything is everything in this motherfucker. Everything is everything. White Castle with their old ass. This shit was blue and white. Blue and white. Now they got orange and red in their motherfucking yes. logo now. They figured some shit out. You know what I'm saying? And yes. the niggas go to college for this shit. 
color frequency. <laughs> so everything is everything. You got to know this goddamn shit. So when they create this light matrix called a movie and they ritualize it by calling it a story in the movie, they're trying to do something, trying to bring something here. Every fucking name, you can find this on IMDb. Mm-hmm. In the trivia part of this movie, every fucking name that they use in the characters of this fucking movie, every fucking name was a name from the original creators of the original one. That's called ritual where I'm from. They're calling yeah. on that old energy. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. That old energy. This is how they do. The tagline of that movie was called Evolution Becomes Revolution. So what you're seeing with the London riots is what we would standard, standard call revolution. But underneath <laughs> that is based upon evolution and that as a scientist is what we're interested in if you're the regular gun toting mounty motherfucker you should be interested in cheering for yay they just had it up to here they can't take no more so they done kicked in a few windows and got some <laughs> flat screens and you know what i'm saying <laughs> and, and some motherfucking printers and shit like that yeah that's some revolutionary shit but we should conscious people should be interested in evolution so let's even pretend they made that shit up and they were just saying that shit by saying it they fucked up they fucked up. Evolution is revolution. What in the movie connects London to them? Like to hear it? Well, here it go. Tom Felton. I don't even know if people knew this was him. He's the boy who played in the Harry Potter series. Yeah. He, was, he was the whitehead. He was the one who was oppressing them in the jail. Yeah. He's from London. He was from London. When the Eighth Revolt, who did they go to? Tom Felton of Harry Potter fame. Because he represented, he represented London. See, again, let me say it again. Even if they weren't consciously thinking of it, by them doing it, it we, are yeah. an energetic, we are in an energetic place where they don't put the attention on London. Also, the guy who ran the plant, Mr. Black Dude, know where he's from? <laughs> oh, okay, oh, okay, okay. I don't think I have to say it no more. So those were the two oppressive forces in the movie. Even the dude who owned the monkey cage place, he was an asshole. But not like not, not my boy from London. They put London, they did that, whether they know it or not. Or whether they was trying to tell you some magical secret about the future, that the Illuminati, you can choose that if you want. But what I'm choosing is spiritually, they put themselves in the target for a rise of the goddamn chaos energy, the monkey kingdom, which is just the nigger kingdom, basically. Now, what's his name? He's from, actually from Oxford, England, but studied in London, you know, all his life. His real name is David uh, uh, Oya Lowo. And uh, he's from Nigeria, but went over there. In the movie, he was the scientist. Remember, the black dude. You remember this, Blue? Yes. His name was Steve Jacobs. Uh-oh, sound familiar? Yeah. yeah. Yaku, nigga. Yaku. Come on now. Now, people was going to say, that's the white man story. It was, on the surface, there were two stories happening. It was the Yaku story, and, they, and they're proud to admit it. That's where they're from. There was also the slavery story, where black people would connect. Remember... You show the monkeys in Africa first, living under the sun, you know what I'm saying, living it up under the fucking fruit, uh, under the palm tree, you know what I'm saying, want a coconut, eat a coconut. <laughs> they get captured by their slave masters. Now, um, his mama, they, she was the first one to start getting the goddamn formula. She got ALZ-1112. When you get 12, you got the Zodiac. Now, the white boy uh, uh, who was in Spider-Man, the main dude, um... Mm, what he said was, what he said was, no, the formula works, but but she was going after a young. She went crazy after a young. So it was looked at as a failure because this smart monkey, this smart monkey, did some human shit, and of course she did some human shit. Why? Because she was a number twelve, the zodiac. Remember, remember from last week's show, my zodiacal dummies. You get what I'm saying? My zo- zodiacal cheerleaders. You get what I'm saying? She, right. it will, it is about human shit. That 12 don't work. The 13 is what? Christ right. energy. And that's the one that worked. That's why he became the savior of the fucking monkeys. He mm-hmm. was Jesus Christ, niggers. Oh, y'all niggas ain't getting this shit, but get it now. You know what I'm saying? Get it now. ALZ13 um, is for Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. Well, yeah. what are they saying? They saying, "Hey, niggers, you forgot who the fuck you were. <laughs> you forgot who the fuck you were. You need to remember your A L Z one thirteen or Christ. You need to remember you Christ, and you're down here to save self and whoever the fuck is on your frequency. Right. That's why the fuck. Well, well, come on, niggers. Now, <laughs> well, 